Welcome to the Beyond Barriers podcast. If you're an ambitious woman who wants to advance in leadership, then this podcast is for you. This podcast is co-hosted by Nikki Barua, digital innovator, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker, and Monica Marquez, senior corporate leader, ex-Googler, and diversity expert. From inspiring stories to cutting edge strategies, you'll learn how to develop the skill set, mindset, and tool set to get future ready fast and accelerate your success. Hi, I'm Monica, your host for today's episode. Albert Einstein once said, never give up on what you really want to do. The person with big dreams is more powerful than the one with all the facts. He went on to say, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Now, we all know the tremendous impact Einstein made by pursuing big dreams. So it stands to reason that boundless curiosity fuels discovery, which ultimately leads to big dreams. Meet Ana Corrales, Chief Operating Officer for Google's consumer hardware business, who shares her career journey and how curiosity helped her gain clarity and led her to the perfect role. As COO, Anna leads the development process for Made by Google's hardware and Nest products, which includes phones, laptops, Google Home, Chromecast, and Nest thermostat. And she manages getting those products into the hands of customers. She also drives the end-to-end IT efforts and customer experience work across Google hardware business. Anna previously led Google Hardware's first-party retail efforts, including driving growth of the e-commerce channel Google Store. Anna has been recognized by Forbes as one of the 50 most powerful Latinas in business and as one of the most powerful Latinas by the Association of Latino Professionals for America. Hispanic Information Technology Executive Council has also recognized her as a top technology executive. She is known in the industry as a seasoned leader who can successfully grow startup businesses into multi-billion dollar companies. In this episode, Anna shares how mentors helped her unleash curiosity and to dream bigger and pursue audacious goals. She also shares insights on making opportunities happen, overcoming fear and limiting beliefs, the importance of creating your own narrative, And she challenges listeners to ask themselves, are your dreams really big enough? Visit imbeyondbarriers.com where you'll find show notes and links to all the resources in this episode, including the best way to get in touch with Anna. Welcome, Anna, to the Beyond Barriers podcast. We are thrilled to have you on. I'm so excited personally because you have been a, a mentor of mine for many years, especially us working at Google. And I'm thrilled to have you here to, you know, share your story because I know there's lots of uh, listeners, our listeners and our, our audience who would love to hear your story and how, you know, your journey to success. So without further ado, I don't want to take up any more time, but share us, you know, who's Anna? Tell us your journey and, and how you, you know, landed in, you know, on the floor, on the floors of Google and um, your successes. Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. Uh, We definitely miss you at Google, but so proud of you for what you're doing and, you know, just this podcast and, you know, your whole outreach to the community. It's really fantastic. And, uh, you know, really congratulations to you. So, and thank you for inviting me for sure. Yes. Um, You know, I would say for me, like things to know about me, I'm originally from Costa Rica. So, um, you know, definitely English is my second language for sure. So if you hear that little accent, that's, that's <laughs> you know, that's a little bit where it's from. Um, I'm an engineer by training. So um, that's definitely something that's shaped my career. And I would say that, you know, it's funny when you look back at your career, there's these obvious trends that were happening, but they were maybe so effortless that you didn't notice them mm-hmm. as trends because... They were effortless. But for me, I think my love of product and, you know, really creating um, and delivering things started really early, started when I was like 15 or 16. And I had mm-hmm. a, you know, tiny business where I sold scrunchies and you know, we talk <laughs> about, about that deeply if there's interest. But, you know, I think that should have been the key for me that that's what I wanted to do. But that's not what happened. I ended up doing, you know, different roles and I ended up doing my career as sort of a, a COO and, you know, overall leader for that. 
as a matter of subtraction. You know, I tried new things. I didn't like them. So I just sort of narrowed and narrowed and narrowed until I realized, oh, I really love these, you know, these type of roles. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's been kind of like a bit of my journey uh, in terms of, you know, landing, landing in the career choice that I did and, and really loving what I do. So. That's fantastic. So you talked a little bit about how, you know, you kind of narrowed it down process of elimination of what you tried and what you didn't try. Um, Can you share a little bit about, you know, that takes courage, right, to try things and then realize that, okay, I don't like this. So you pivot. Um, And sometimes we see where a lot of women will fall into the trap of, you know, they'll start doing one thing and then they aren't deliberate. They aren't really taking the time to think about what's their next step. So share a little bit about how you gained that clarity and the courage to kind of try things, pivot things, and and ultimately land where you landed. Yeah, that's a great question. I would say there were two sort of large phases for me. The first, uh, and in both phases, there's one common thread. The Uh common thread is that I love learning. And so mm-hmm. I get super interested in any topic, like you'll give me any topic I know anything about. And I'll be like, Oh, my God, I'm so excited about this. And I'll read about that. And then I'll double click on that. And I just click and click and click. It could be anything It could be like mm-hmm. my son got into Hamilton. So I read so much about his story and like the play and uh-huh. his other plays and his family, you know, just you could just go endless in the research. But that quest of learning was super important for me. And so early on, I ended up doing roles because I would start one job. I would do it for like a year to a year and a half. And Mm -hmm. then I would get interested in some other adjacent problem. And I was like, oh, what is Monica's role? What is, you know, Susie's role? What is Joey's role? I'm going to go find out what those are. And I would try them out. Mm -hmm. And so it was this like quest for learning and making an impact and just super excited about that. So I was like the first phase where I would say learning was a big piece of it. But I just wasn't thoughtful about it. I just was Mm. like, oh, that seems interesting. I'll go over there. And that other thing seems interesting. And I'll go over there. And then along the lines, what happened, in my opinion, is I had done enough rotations that like management sort of noticed. And they're like, oh, she can do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Let's start moving her into management. Let's start moving her into like more roles. And so they, because I got that opportunity, then all of a sudden I realized, oh, gosh, maybe I'm on to something. And I would say that's the second phase where it became purposeful. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I had tried, I tried new things even in my second phase, and I was still that quest for learning, but I was actually spending time, like mental energy units, thinking about what should the rotation be? Is rotation A or B better? If I do B, what's my plus one job from there? Whereas before, you know, when I was young, you know, my 20s, I was just kind of doing whatever seemed more fun, most fun. Um, And so I think, you know, you and I had talked about this when you were at Google, but this point that you have to spend time thinking about, you have to be deliberate. Gosh, I really wish I would have known that way sooner. I just Mm -hmm. didn't get that tip from anybody. And I don't have any regrets, but I I think I could have done so much better if I had just Mm -hmm took an hour, went for a walk. I, I think a lot better when I'm walking and had and had been more deliberate about that. So I think if that's the second phase is at some point I did decide, hey, I think I want to be a COO. If I want to do that, what are the skills I need to get there? I have some, but I don't have others. And I'm let me go get those experiences to really complement it so that I can be good at that job and I can actually hopefully get a chance to become that, uh, which, you know, luckily for me, it did. Um, but that after a certain point, it was definitely very deliberate. And, you know, I spent a lot of, not a lot, but definitely some time thinking about it more deliberately. And I would say, I always feel like I do not leave enough white space to think, um, Mm. it's so easy to survive, you know, just sort of survive the day. And especially when pandemic, you're so busy, it's Mm -hmm. hard to reflect back and say, how do I really want to, you know, manage my time versus, you know, calendar managing your time. That's fantastic advice in terms of being deliberate and thinking about, you know, what is it that you need to to do next? Share a little bit about, you know, you know, because that's so important in that you gave yourself the time in the white space, whether it's taking a walk for an hour and really kind of thinking about what's next. And you identified the competencies or the things that you needed to acquire in order to become CEO, so COO or whatever it is that you were aiming for. Um, how did how did you then make those opportunities happen, right? Because they're not just going to fall in your lap. Like, what is it that you did, you know, d- you know, just methodically uh, to make those things happen? 
I mean, one of them for sure is that I go talk to other people who had the career that I thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, in one case, I sort of shadowed somebody for a day because I thought, oh, I think I want this, but do I really want that? And, you know, I realized that job is like super, super stressful. And so there was a point when I, after I shattered, I was like, do I really want that? That seems like a lot. Um, <laughs> and then I realized, okay, but it's a lot of what I like. So I think I do want to go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so in some cases, I literally just kind of cold called somebody and said, look, I really think I need to have experience with, you know, salespeople. I grew up in a complete scientist household, right? Everybody mm -hmm. there is an engineer or a doctor or a, you know, science PhD. And so I, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't meet my first salesperson ever until I was 30. I mean, literally, I just it's funny to say that, but I really didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that was like a big gap. And so I asked people I knew mentors of mine or people I knew like, Hey, I think I really need a job that has front end experience. How do I do that? Can you connect me with somebody? you got to work it right. you got to put effort to it. Um, but I ended up getting those connections and, you mm -hmm. know, there was a role and I applied for it and I got it. And, you know, it was a huge experience for me because it was such a different culture mm -hmm. than, you know, the one I grew up with. Um, so you did part of that later in life. I would say it was more, you just sort of knew, or, you know, you, you had, you know, you knew people that were going to have the role. And so you would talk to them about your career and what you wanted to do, or people would approach you to try to understand, you know, mm -hmm. what you wanted to do. Um, I think if you are passionate about what you do and you are contributing and you're really good, you know, you, people will come to you, right. And they'll say, Hey, like, do you want to be part of my team? And so those opportunities started to sprout up. So it was a combination, but there were definitely many cases in which I had to go figure it out. And, you know, for me in particular, early in my career was the sales gap that I just mm -hmm. didn't really understand that culture that well. Um, that was definitely an interesting, I, my first job in that, it was super eye opening. I just had no idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I, I, was, I was the person who was like, oh, it's so hard to create the product and it's so <laughs> hard to design it. It's so hard to, you know, uh, develop it and then build it. And so like selling it is easy, right? Well, guess what? <laughs> totally not, uh, but I had no idea. And so, uh, yeah, it was very fiery eye-opening for sure. That's fantastic. And now I know during those times, I'm sure you had, you know, you might have had some fears or limiting beliefs that kind of cropped up. How did you manage those? How did you manage to kind of keep those feelings in the, you know, on the back seat? Yeah. So look, everybody has that. I think everybody looks at uh, careers and they're oh that person you know that person was like born a golden baby and they just like did everything perfect and their life was amazing and like I'm here to bust that you know myth for sure <laughs> everybody I can't tell how many times I cried you know you end up with scrapes you know uh, you know your hair is like messy from all the different things you've done <laughs> nobody shows up looking amazing and like totally relaxed all the time there's a lot of grit and a lot of you know you really need to sort of want it mm -hmm. uh, because there's going to be moments where you are you know just besides yourself or something unfair happened or you're scared or you know it just, it's not a, it's not a linear journey ever. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, there were so many of those moments, you know, some of the moments were early on when I wanted a role like in sales and I didn't really have mm -hmm. the experience and plenty of people told me no. And I was like, okay, well, next person on my, you know, my list, like you were just sort of under -tared. That's part of it. You need to really want it and know about it. Mm -hmm. The second one is getting comfortable with the fact that you're going to be uncomfortable. And I know that sounds mm -hmm. really trite, but it makes a huge difference because you'll tell people like, look, you're going to make this change. You're going to feel uncomfortable. I just had this conversation with somebody. They go day one, that they're like, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm like, we talked about this. Like, it's not a great feeling. And they're like, no, but I feel like I'm going to fail. And I'm like, I know you probably won't. You might, but you probably won't. And like, what's the worst thing that can happen if you do? Mm -hmm. Uh, but they they just have that feeling and you feel it in your body and it's just awful. And so you have to be okay with like, I know that's going to happen. It's like getting a call. I know that's going to happen, but like, I'll be fine afterwards. And you have to believe that you're going to be fine afterwards. How one time I remember for me, there was like a particular job, long story that I will try to summarize, but I felt you know, really uncomfortable. I was crying. I have an older sister who's been a great influence and just mm -hmm. a wonderful sister to me. And uh, she came to me and she's like, look, 
Like, I know this is tough. I'm not telling you it's not a tough situation, but like, really, what's the worst that can happen? And I had had my daughter like about a year and a half before. She's mm -hmm. like, it's not like they're going to come take your baby away from you. Like, really, <laughs> like what really truly is the worst that could happen? And I had never thought about it that way. You know, I never thought about like, okay, what is the worst that could happen? And so I thought about that. I'm like, you know, the worst that can happen is just really not that bad. So like, mm -hmm. why am I so stressed out? And I think for me, I just wasn't comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's that one. And the third, and this is true, you've got to fake it till you make it sometimes. Yes. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have imposter syndrome. There was, you know, I definitely have had, I had one meeting where I absolutely 100% had imposter syndrome. I tried to get myself uninvited. I was not successful. I had to go to the meeting. <laughs> uh, and you know, it went great, but I was so nervous. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, a, a good friend and mentor of mine, he's like, look, you got to just go in there, pretend you belong if you don't think you do and just do it and like fake it till you make it. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, um, <laughs> but I did it and it worked out great. So it's a combination of techniques, but mm -hmm. none of them are comfortable. And so if you're sitting there always like, you know, perfectly poised, perfectly, you know, just like everything's going great. Your days always go great. Like you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough because mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be falling off the bicycle, getting a scrape, you know, uh, getting up, dusting yourself off. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that. You yeah. have to do that. No, that's fantastic. And so tangible. I love the the three steps because I think, like you said, of, of really kind of just pushing forward, but it's the whole, um, the assessment that you did of like, what's the worst that can happen and actually putting like a number to that and saying, it's not that bad. What's the upside? What's the downside? I can live with the downside. So I'm going to keep yeah. moving forward. That's yeah, and I, and you know, and I was really sad at that moment. Like I was really scared, I think is the word I would use. And mm -hmm. You know, leave it to your awesome older sister to come tell you, like, it's okay. You know, I've seen this movie before. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, like, even if I'm wrong, like, the worst is not that bad. And that, that really took the fear out of it for me. I was like, you know what? Totally. And it changes how you show up, right? Because you're, like, no longer fearful. So you show up fearless. And mm -hmm. there's a lot to be said about that. You got to You got to believe, right? Absolutely. Now, tell me a little bit about, about, you know, where I see a lot of women struggle is um, the, you know, like you said, being intentional, identifying what it is that you want and creating those opportunities. But then the whole idea around personal brand and self-promotion and being able to articulate your story, I see a lot of women getting tripped up there. Um, what's your advice there? And how did you approach the idea around kind of um, elevating your or bringing some visibility around you and what you wanted to accomplish? Yeah, that's a great question. And honestly, I'll be honest, I think this is one of the areas that for me is probably like been a gap and I, I think it will continue to be. Uh -huh. um, I, I remember the first time somebody told me, what is your brand and what do you represent? And, you know, how are you getting your message out there? And I just could not even understand the question. I just thought it was so weird because, you know, I got there, I worked hard. I was just focused on my work and sort of let my work speak for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even think about it. You know, it wasn't even really a concept. Um, and as I grew up in sort of my career, it became, it became a discussion. And for me, like, it's super important that it be genuine. You know, like I know there are some yes. people, I just told you I'm from like a STEM family, you know, probably, you know, there's probably much better people that are like better sales, better marketing. That's just not who I am. That's not what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the fact that I even had to have a narrative was something really odd. Uh, the way that it became possible for me is I was just really genuine because I really wanted to like, that's super important for me, how it comes across mm -hmm. and I am who I am. And so if I want to change something to develop, which all of us are a product of development forever, right? Like right. we never finished ever, like ever. And so I realized that for me, it may take longer to get the change because it has to be super genuine. That's one area where I can't really sort of fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's really important for you to understand to yourself, forget what anybody else says, forget what you show outside, like with yourself, have that conversation of saying, what do I really, what matters to me? What are my values? Mm -hmm. What do I think I contribute? What do you think I can learn? And so once you understand it better for yourself, mm -hmm. and like literally that's a conversation just with yourself, 
then how you project it really matters and it becomes really consistent because here's the thing that you need to know even if you're an engineer you know even you're like me nerdy like didn't even think about this if you don't have the narrative out there there's going to be a narrative about you mm. it's not like it's going to be empty right it's just not going to be something so either you engage in it or somebody else will decide it for you but it's not going to be missing and you don't want other people to say who you are you want you know you want to say who you are and what you represent um, and so to me when i started to realize that Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, there's this, this, you know, conversation or narrative that's developing and, mm -hmm. and I've never even paid attention to it. And do I agree with it? Do I not like, forget that, you know, if I want to, if I want a narrative about me, I want to make sure I know what that is. Right. Uh, and I want to make sure I care deeply because, you know, it's something that you've had for your whole career. And so I think this was a big, slow evolution for me on how I got comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's super important because, again, it's not like it's going to be absent. Like if that was a choice, fine, you know, don't play that. But that's not what's going to happen. It's going right. to be there. So you better care and you better pay attention. You better be intentional and super genuine about what it is that you want to you want out there and who you want to be. That is so, so that's insightful. That's how I think of it. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what's so powerful. What you just said is that, you know, if you aren't going to tell your story, someone else is going to tell it for you. So you may yes. as well write that story so that you have some control over what is yes. being said about you. That yes. is, that is brilliant. And, you now, know, and the other thing that I think about it, you know, when you're in a project and you're like, okay, we're doing this really complicated project. So like, let's write down what our North Star is. Like, what mm -hmm. are the three things that we care deeply about with respect to this project. I feel like this narrative and brand is sort of the same thing. Like mm -hmm. you need to have your North star because there's going to be met plenty of times where you get to a crossroad and there's like option A, B or C. And if you're not consistent about your North star, you have no criteria by which to make a selection. Mm -hmm. And so you end up in like this, like non homo, you know, like you, you just, not well thought out right. options <laughs> that just happen versus you saying like, these are the things that really matter to me. Mm -hmm. And so therefore when I think about choices and you know, the more, the longer you work and the more you contribute, um, you'll have more and more options. And so you really need to, in my opinion, have that sort of guiding star, North star, mm -hmm. uh, very clear so that all options can be vetted against that. And that's how that brand becomes consistent because there's a North star to it. Um, right. Otherwise you could have a brand, you know, circa 2020 and, you know, another brand in circa 2025, which was totally different from the 2015 version. Like, you know, it's uh, you, you really <laughs> want more consistency in that. Exactly. If you don't have clarity of where you want to go, then how are you going to get there? <laughs> if, if you don't right. know exactly right. the direction right. to head. Yeah. That's fantastic. What if you could pinpoint the invisible ceilings limiting your success? Imagine having clarity on your strengths and barriers so you can take action and gain unstoppable momentum to advance as a future ready leader. Well, that's exactly what the Beyond Barriers quiz will help you discover. You'll get your personalized score based on the 25 essential elements proven to accelerate success in the digital age, so you can understand what's holding you back and where to focus your efforts. The Beyond Barriers quiz is completely free and takes just a few minutes. Go to imbeyondbarriers.com slash quiz and take the quiz today. So we talked a little bit about like, you know, you, you are in this industry and in this world, like technology is so disruptive. It's everything's changing. You're shipping every day. Um, how does Anna, like, how do you make sure that you are, you know, being successful? Like what are your ha daily habits and rituals? So what is the day in the life of Anna like to yeah. keep sane and keep moving forward? You know, they've changed a lot, I would say, for sure, over time. So they're not, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, static. Uh, but I would say, especially because the pandemic, talk about everything changing, right? Yes. And, and you've seen the statistics of how many women, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really have left the workforce. And look, I can understand why, because all of a sudden you're at home, you have your kids here. So you're the teacher and you're cleaning and you're cooking and you're doing your work. And, you know, just everything became sort of one thing um for me the journey in terms like of habits that were that mattered to me 
started very early. It started when I had my daughter, actually, um, because before, I'll be honest with you, I just like love work. I was working a lot. My husband and I got married really young and we didn't have kids intentionally until later. So we just had all this empty time that we could do really fun. Th- it just wasn't a choice. You know, I mean, you right. could fit it all. But then once I had my daughter, uh, it made made it super clear to me what my priorities are. So I think, you know, knowing what those are is super important. So like for me, spending time with my family, mm-hmm. I'm Latin families, everything, oh, yes. especially for my kids. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, for example, I took a year off with each of my kids, which in tech, especially for a female is like unheard of, right? Because right. you feel like you have to reboot your entire career. But that was really important to me. And I, that's one of those conversations. I was really afraid to do that. By the way, most people don't remember I ever did it. And it mattered zero. And I got promoted both times because I think they missed me so much. So <laughs> great decision. But at that moment, it was really scary. So I think time with my family, is something super important to me and flexibility to be able to do that. The second for me, I, you know, this is going to sound like a commercial, but it's just true. I happened to get a Fitbit device like this one, right? Like <laughs> in January of 20. 20 because we were working on that you know with that acquisition Mm -hmm. and i realized oh my gosh when i am working i'm literally barely moving that is crazy even though i did dancing on the side and even though Mm -hmm. i would do exercises on a regular work day i just would move like literally almost nothing and so i started to change that to get to that you know lose of ten thousand steps every day and boom the COVID, you know COVID pandemic started and so through this whole time, I've really been like diligent about that. And so I go for walks all the time, whether it's one-on-ones or like every day, I don't miss it ever. Um, and doing walking one-on-ones is something that has kept me sane for sure. And the third one is finding that quiet space. When I start mm-hmm. feeling like overwhelmed, there's just like too much and you're just surviving. I can, f- I, I now recognize like the feeling in my body. Mm-hmm. I will just like, cancel a few meetings or take a day off or just like have time to reflect and, and sort of, you know, Mm -hmm. relax if you will. Um, And then doing fun things I enjoy, like whether that's swimming or baking, you know, those are like two favorites. Thankfully they go together. Otherwise it would be a really bad equation (laughs) because baking could win out. Um, But some of those things that just bring me joy and are really relaxing to me. Gardening is another one. I like to garden a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of these, if you if you notice, are very peaceful. Like in the water, you can't have a phone. It's you're not really going to be gardening having a phone. You can't really do it while you're baking. So distance away from my devices and things mm-hmm. that I activities that I really can't multitask on are things that make me excessively happy and bring I think bring me back into balance. Um, so those are some of the things I do to to try to stay sane. Those are so important. And I love how you said it's activities that keep you away from your devices so that you actually can get some of that white space. Because when you're doing those things, you do yes. kind of ruminate and think about all the things that, you know, you are doing in life, right? And how they all align. So I think that's fantastic. I know this is super weird, but I feel like gardening makes me like a better leader, you know, because really? you're just yeah. thinking. Uh-huh. And it's like, you know, it's so peaceful. It's so easy. You know, you're just there. It's beautiful. It's, you know, sunny, like windy. You're, you know, making your garden really nice, but you're just sort of also thinking, um, I swear, I think it's made me a really good leader. Um, I guess one other thing I forgot too, is you have to say no a lot. Like you have to say no to things. Um, And so, you know, we're doing this podcast today, but you know, honestly, there's many other things that I get invited for that I would love to be able to support, but I'm just like, I can't, I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't do all of them. Not even, I bet you I probably hit a 10% ratio of what I get asked to do or could participate in. And I would love to do most of them, but you just have to prioritize uh, what you do. So for me, that saying no uh, has become, you know, an important skill set. And you know, you always think, okay, I've said no so much is probably at the top, but sure enough, you end up having to develop even more and more, you know, sort of conscious decisions around where you're going to spend your time or not. Um, And it's hard, you know, you don't want to disappoint people and, or be ungrateful, but at the end of the day, you just can't do it all. You got to say no. Yeah, that's so important because, you know, if you are a yes person, you keep saying yes, you actually are saying no to some things that that you're not thinking about when you say when you commit to something exactly right, and you're not thoughtful about it. So I think usually that's health related, right? You just run yourself into the ground. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
So insightful. And so I wanted to touch on one last thing before we we wrap up is that, you know, the power of community. Um, I think that is one thing that I've seen, you know, women not leverage as much. And, you know, as Latinas, as you know, we have these huge, you know, networks, um, but we sometimes don't leverage them in the way that we should. How have you in the past used, you know, um, influential relationships or built relationships where you felt comfortable to ask for the help that you need? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think that's been one of my secret sauces is that I grew up with, you know, an older sister and my mom who was super accomplished person. So I felt like I had this built in community. And, you know, obviously, they're both older than me, my mom. And, and so they would have this great advice that they would just share freely. And so I became very used to being able to say, hey, I'm thinking this, but I love running it against I love talking to somebody about it. And you realize when you go through anything, right, that generally speaking, you can find people who have gone through that. And so like my mentors, you know, there's these two guys that have been super influential in my life and they've seen so much and they have a different perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they gave me such great advice. Like, Hey, you know, go to ask to go do this, go get a raise. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I can ask for that. That's really uncomfortable. They're like, here's how you're going to do it, you know, and you're going to do it Tuesday. And, you know, they, there's all these people that have these experiences that you've gone through, um, that you're going through that or be so helpful. And, and now interesting enough, I feel like also like I have a 17 year old daughter. And so I'll sit and talk to them, you know, her and her friends and you get all this insight Mm -hmm. from, you know, just younger people's point of view of the world. Um, And also my father-in-law. So I feel like I have like this three generational thing going that really helps me out because they have different points of view and you just get all this data Uh, And it helps. So I am, I'm the opposite. I'm like, Hey, I'm feeling this. Let's talk about it. I definitely don't have any hesitation of asking for help or, you know, saying that I'm confused about something. Mm -hmm. I I really enjoy the discourse and I really enjoy that sense of community. And it's super Latin, right? Like, Hey, let's all have cafecito and talk about it. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, So I, I think that's been a plus for me, frankly. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's so important. And I think what what the underlying trend that I constantly hear from you is that the love of learning, like learning is your superpower. And, you know, and leveraging all of those, you know, tapping into the insights from all of those people is fantastic. And um, so in closing out, I mean, thinking about, you know, how women can accelerate their success, especially in this disruptive digital age, and the art of learning, how do you like, how do you make time? How do you make sure that you're constantly learning? You know, I think for me, I can feel when I have a thousand balls in the air and I I know the level of discomfort that I'm comfortable with right now and Mm -hmm. which one I'm not. But I also know like if I'm bored for one minute, that's a huge problem. Like I reckon that's like the worst for me. (laughs) Um, So I think I've known myself better now and I can recognize the science and in my body and in terms of my behavior. Um, And so I can tell when I'm learning or not learning. Mm -hmm. And I will just tell you one thing we didn't touch upon, but it's made a huge difference for me is, you know, along the lines, you know, I think my parents really challenged me to like contribute, right? They, they Mm -hmm. used to say like, you're not here to consume oxygen. Like you're here to do something and make it count while you're here. And Mm -hmm. that really stuck with me. But as I got through my career, you know, one of my mentors that we were talking about, he told me, he's like, you know, I want you to think big. And I thought I was, I was like, what do you mean? I'm not thinking big. He's like, no, really, let's have that conversation. What do you want to do? And I would describe what I thought was this really big aspiration. He's like, that's just really obvious to me that you're going to get there. Totally not obvious to me, but apparently super obvious to him. Right. He said, what is the thing that you want to do that's not obvious? Like, what is that like really scary dream that you don't even want to say because you're embarrassed that I will quote you someday as saying that? And man, he pushed me so hard for like four meetings. Uh-huh. I hadn't even really thought about it. So what I thought was big for me in his mind was not big enough. And he kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And after a while, I was like, oh my God, you know, I really... I really wasn't thinking as big Mm -hmm. as, as I could have. And I got to tell you, that's something I ask myself all the time. Like, am I really, you know, aspiring big enough for big enough? And, you know, I may not get to everything. um, But like, if I even get to half of that, that's amazing. You know what I mean? So I feel like he, this, 
this really push for like really dream big. And it sounds, again, may sound like big is easy. It's not. And, and it requires a lot of thought. It has made a huge difference in my career. Mm-hmm. And it's made a huge difference in my personal life as well in terms of what opportunities I go to. Um, and so I think for me that, uh, that's a big advice. Like, are you really thinking big? Are you really, right. really or not? You know, and I think you did, you know, right. You left yeah. a super position to go do something amazing and huge and disruptive. And that takes courage. It takes courage to do that. Well, thank you. And, so. and, you know, I think what you said is, you know, so true is we think, you know, it's like, put that dream out there and then scratch it out and think bigger and scratch it out. And you need to do yeah. it three or four times, like you said, to really yeah. kind of get to the point where it's this crazy audacious goal that you, even you are kind of like, is this, can I even accomplish no, nobody this? Nobody saw my paper when I wrote it down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I think, you know, but that has helped you get to where you go, right? You're aiming for the stars and you land on the moon and you know, you, you never really thought you'd ever make it that far. I think it's yeah. fantastic. I've definitely had a couple of those already where I was like, wow, um, you know, for boards for me, uh, where I never thought that would happen. And now I'm on a board that I can't believe I can do and that I get the privilege of doing that. Never, I honestly never in a million years that I think I would get that. And I did. And it's amazing. And I, probably wouldn't have even tried if I hadn't been pushed so 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 far by by my mentors made a huge difference yeah what I also love that that I hear you saying over and over is you constantly you still have mentors I mean I think what happens with some people is they get to a certain point and they start mentoring other people but they forget to seek out mentorship themselves and it seems like this is a lifelong habit that you constantly have and you are seeking out mentors that even don't look like you right so that you're you're oh they mostly don't actually (laughs) <laughs> they mostly don't. And I think that's really helpful. I mean, definitely you should get some if you can that look like you, but I find the more the most disruptive advice is from people who really don't understand your fears at all and they don't have them. And so they're just like, go for it. You're like, no, but like, eh. they're like, oh, no, 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 push yourself there. So they really don't look like me at all. And I would tell you, I definitely still have mentors. I probably talk to my mentor like, I don't know, we ping or chat or talk like once, probably once a month easily. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just recently I had an issue. I was really bothered by something and I called him and he like literally gave me this one liner. He's perfect for one liners, by the way. (laughs) Uh, And in 10 seconds flat, essentially resolved my concern. I was like, wow, I could have spent weeks worried about that, you know, but uh, nope, 10 seconds. That's all it took. That's fantastic. Well, Anna, thank you so much because like you said earlier, you have so many requests all the time to participate in things and you have to say no because there's so much on your plate. So we are absolutely honored and thank you for the pearls of wisdom that you've shared. I know that our audience is going to, you know, love listening to this episode and they're going to learn so much from it. And we get asked all the time, you know, uh, how do we continue to follow Anna, you know, follow the things that you're doing? What's the best way if someone were to kind of want to follow you and, and get in contact with you, LinkedIn, what is it that, that um, you know? How I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not super active in, you know, uh, <laughs> in LinkedIn or in other ones, which I know, you know, it goes back to you can't do it all. Right. Um, probably LinkedIn at this LinkedIn. point would be my guess. Um, but, but, you know, be aware. I don't, I don't check it all the time, uh, yes. but definitely more so than social media for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely that would be the easiest way. No, it's my privilege. I love working with you and, you know, really thank you for inviting me and uh, super excited about what you're doing and uh, you know, great to see you again and wish you all the success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for listening to the Beyond Barriers podcast. There are thousands of podcasts out there and we are so grateful that you've chosen to listen to ours. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating and tell a friend about it and subscribe to get new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you'll find show notes, links, and the best way to connect with our guests. See you next episode.